Hi guys, Dr. Gedi is here. In today's class, we are going to study introduction of engineering mechanics. So first of all, what is mechanics? It is the study of effects of forces on a body. When this body is a rigid body, then it is engineering mechanics. And when this body is a solid body, then it is mechanics of solid. And when this body is a fluid, then it is fluid mechanics. So these three are the branches of mechanics. We all know that every body contains some mass and it has its own dimensions. In many engineering analyses, the dimension of the body is not important. So for that analysis, the body is said to be a particle. So what is particle? A body whose dimensions are not important. Let's take an example for even better understanding. Suppose this one is the nucleus. And this is the electron revolving around the nucleus. And we want to study the motion of this electron around the nucleus. Then for this particular study, the dimension of this electron is not important for us. So we can take this electron as a particle. Now let's again assume that this is not the nucleus but this is our sun and this is not electron but this is our earth and we again want to study the motion of our earth around the sun then again for this particular study the dimension of our earth is not important for us so we can again take this earth as a particle here you can see that it is not always necessary that the size of particle is always microscopic. Now come to the free body diagram. It is basically a diagram of a body when it is freed from all types of supports and only external forces are shown in it. Let's take an example for our better understanding. Suppose you are standing on a ground and you want to draw your free body diagram. Then you have to draw yourself without any support. Then you will be in a free fall because earth will pull you towards its center with a force of mg. But in actual you are not in free fall because the ground is applying equal and opposite reaction on you in this way. So this is your free body diagram. Let's take another example. We have a flexible rope like this and we are putting some weight on it. Then because of this weight, the final shape of this rope will be something like this. Now if we want to draw the free body diagram of this portion then we have to draw only this portion without any support. Again it will be in free fall because the earth will pull this weight towards its center. But in actual case this is not in free fall because these supports are applying reactions in this way. So we have to draw these reactions in the free body diagram. So this is the free body diagram of the concerned area. Now I think you know what is free body diagram. Let's come to the support. In mechanics, there are basically three types of support. First one is roller support. And it is also known as point support or knife edge support. And this second one is hinge support. And it is also known as pin support. And the third one is 
quick support now we are going to see these supports in detail let's begin with roller support suppose this is a table on a frictionless ground then weight of this table will act in this way and in order to counter this weight this support will apply reactions in this way let's take another one suppose this is a ball which is rolling on a frictionless surface then again its weight will act in downward direction and the normal reaction of the ground will act in this way so you can see that in these diagrams the support reactions are only in one direction so whenever a support can apply reactions only in one direction then it is known as roller support and in mechanics this roller support is represented in this way so from now onwards whenever you see this type of diagram in mechanics it would mean that it is a representation of a real life situation it doesn't always mean that there is a physical roller so once again it is just a representation now come to the hinge support let's again take a table on a ground weight of this table will act in this way and the normal reactions of the ground will act in this way now consider that we are applying a force in this way and also this surface is not frictionless then there would be some frictional resistance in this way now again take a ball rolling on a surface then weight of this ball will act in this way and the normal reaction of the ground will act in this way now suppose that this surface is not frictionless then there would also be some frictional resistance let's take a typical hinge and we are applying a force in this way then the reaction force will be exerted in this way here you can see that in these diagrams the support reactions are in two directions so whenever a support can exert reactions in two directions then that support is known as hinge support and in mechanics this hinge support is represented in this way so again whenever you see this type of diagram in mechanics it would mean that it is a representation of a real life situation it doesn't always mean that there is a physical hinge in actual now come to the pig support let's take a cantilever beam and we are applying a force in this way then the reactions will be developed on this beam in this way if we further analyze this beam in detail then this force will try to deform this beam in this way in order to counter this deformation a moment reaction will be applied by the support let's again take a typical hinge and we are applying a force on it in this way then the reactions will be exerted on it in this way if you further analyze this force in detail you will find that the line of action of this force is not passing through the hinge point that's why this force will try to rotate this link in this way now consider that this hinge is not frictionless then because of this friction some reactive moment will come into existence so here you can see that 
in these diagram support reactions are in two direction along with a supporting moment so whenever a support can apply reactions in two direction and also a reactive moment then that support is known as fixed support now come to the equilibrium equilibrium simply means that the net force is zero there are two types of equilibrium static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium now we are going to see these two types of equilibriums in detail suppose you are standing on a ground then your weight will act in downward direction and the ground will apply some normal reactions in upward direction if the magnitude of this normal reaction will be equal to the weight of your body then you will be at equilibrium since you are at a static position that's why your state of equilibrium is known as static equilibrium now again consider yourself standing on a surface again your weight will act in downward direction and the normal reaction will act in upward direction and the magnitude of this normal reaction is equal to the weight of your body then again you are at equilibrium now consider that the surface at which you are standing is the surface of a vehicle and this vehicle is moving with a uniform velocity that means acceleration of this vehicle is zero then the state of your equilibrium will be known as dynamic equilibrium so it is interesting to know that when a body is in equilibrium doesn't always mean that the body is at rest it may be moving with a uniform velocity so the condition of equilibrium is net force must be zero or in another word acceleration must be zero let's take a random object in a x y coordinate and various external forces are acting on it then from newton's second law of motion net force on the body in any direction will be equal to the rate of change of momentum of the body in that direction that is it is equal to the mass into acceleration of the body in that direction so summation of force in x direction will be mass into acceleration of the body in x direction and this acceleration in x direction must be zero for equilibrium that means for equilibrium summation of force in x direction must be zero also summation of force in y direction will be equal to the mass into acceleration of the body in y direction and this acceleration in y direction must be zero for equilibrium that is summation of force in y direction must be zero for equilibrium also summation of moment about any point will be equal to the mass moment of inertia of the body into angular acceleration of the body about that point and this angular acceleration of the body about any point must be zero for equilibrium that means for rotational equilibrium summation of moment about any point must be equal to the zero 
now come to the concurrent forces to understand this let's again take a flexible rope in this way and we are putting some weight on it then the flexible rope will be deformed like this and we have already discussed that the free body diagram of this portion would be this if we further observe the line of action of these forces then we will find that these are intersecting at one common point so if line of action of many forces acting on a body are intersecting at one common point then these forces are concurrent forces that's it for today's class guys if you found my video useful, chances are my these videos are useful too. So check out this video and to subscribe my channel. Just click on this and don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video till end. I really appreciate.